SpongeBob SquarePants is definitely one of those shows that needs no introduction. Since premiering 21 years ago, it has become a smash hit not only with millennials and Generation Z, but the baby-faced Generation Alpha as well. Even in an era where most everything made by man can be accessed with the click of a button, SpongeBob continues to have a special place in the hearts of kids and adults alike. But I have to admit that I would feel bad for someone who does find SpongeBob this way, through a streaming service or a torrent link. Because I think back very fondly of what it was like to have to fight for my right to see and have each and every SpongeBob episode. That early SpongeBob VHS culture, where it felt like there was so much special stuff to find. Even if it was something silly like a gummy commercial or an award show cameo, that kind of stuff felt like it was just part of the experience of loving the show. And I remember going out of my way to try and record these sorts of things on tape, as if my collection wasn't complete until I owned each and every obscurity. But another thing I remember around this time was that SpongeBob would sometimes cameo in other shows. And I started trying to record these appearances as well, even in shows not made by Nickelodeon. The next thing I knew, I was taping episodes of The Simpsons and The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy just to get a brief clip of something that almost looked like SpongeBob? But somehow, that still wasn't enough. So the moment I began to explore the World Wide Web, it was inevitable that similar SpongeBob spoofs were going to be the first things I ended up finding. And no matter the quality, it was usually those things which ended up keeping my attention. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> Today, I want to look back at a few notable SpongeBob parodies I saw on the early internet. From bold and brash to belongs in the trash. This means I'll be skipping over more modern things like the SpongeBob anime or we gotta get SpongeBob back. While more charming by far, they just really don't fit the bill of what I'm interested in today. Additionally, later in the video, we're going to be joined by a very special guest who's going to help us analyze one of these early hits. But first, I want to share something with you guys. Right now, I am watching the official third Spongebob movie, Sponge on the Run, on my laptop. It's an interesting film, worth seeing for the visuals alone, but the question is, how am I watching this right now? How can I see this? And I think you guys know exactly where I'm going with this. Today's video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com, the website for glasses that helps you see things. GlassesUSA.com is an amazing online service that cuts out the middleman and sells frames directly to you. Due to its unique online service, they can sell you frames up to 70% off retail prices, with some starting as low as just $30. Alongside the 4,000 styles of eyeglasses and sunglasses featured, the site also has a virtual mirror that can help you preview what each and every pair will look like on your pretty little face. It's weird that I said it that way, but I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I'm not doing that line again. Plus, the site has free shipping and free returns within 14 days, with a 365 day warranty on each and every frame. It really is a risk-free purchase, allowing you to stay quarantined while being confident in the quality you get in the end. Now there are two big reasons that you guys can trust me when it comes to GlassesUSA.com. First of all, would someone in a gangsta Spongebob shirt lie to you? And second, I've been wearing this pair of glasses for well over a year and they come from GlassesUSA.com and if I secretly didn't like them, I would just stop wearing them whenever the video wasn't sponsored. Still, as they say, tis the season for a brand new look, so I, I did have them send in a few more pairs to try on for this video just in case I wanted to change up my look a little. I mean, just look at these, like it's the exact same pair I think, but they're bright pink and it's like, wow, it just jumps out at you, like all the, it's pink, you know? The rest of the ones I got are sunglasses, which is gonna be really convenient because winter is here and this, the, the sun gets horrible in winter where I live, it just gets in your eyes. Some of these make me wanna like go out just so people can see me and be like, wow. Now can I point at him like, get in the line, buddy. Oh, but these are my favorite, these are my favorite. These are the coolest glasses I've ever owned. <laughs> 
So as a special gift from me to you guys, uh, there's going to be a special link at the top of the description right there, which is going to give you a special discount at GlassesUSA.com, and that's just for you guys, and uh, that'll only be there for a limited time, so you gotta check that out now. So once again, that's the link at the top of the description. And hell, since I got my new prescription in, I can suddenly tell that a lot of you guys aren't subscribed! We're trying to get to 400,000 subscribers, and if we can do that by December 31st, I'm going to make a massive iCarly video. And as a stretch goal, if we can get to 410 by the end of the year, I'm going to buy every Animorphs book and make a massive analysis about that. But the only way we'll be able to pull any of that off is if all of you guys go down and make sure you're subscribed. I've been checking my analytics every day just seeing that magical number go up for what feels like the first time in years and it's really made me feel super excited to get videos out. And so I want to thank you guys for sending, you know, your love this way. But at the same time, I know that you guys want to see an actual video. So uh, I'm not going to waste your time anymore. Here we go. The fine art of Spongebob parodies. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be talking about is something you almost certainly came across if you were a Spongebob fan on the early internet. That being Spongebob in China. When I first saw this, I'm embarrassed to admit, I thought it was entirely real. An image of this short used to pop up when you search Spongebob on Google Images, and I just figured that different countries had their own versions of cartoons to match with the local culture. It makes sense, it was what we did at the time, why wouldn't other countries do the same thing? But in actuality, Spongebob in China was simply an edit of scenes from the Spongebob movie, which happened to go on to become one of the first viral hits on early YouTube. Now the first thing you tend to notice about Spongebob Squarepants in China is that it's, well, racist. Something that the video even owns up to in its description. The animation is altered to give the characters slanted eyes and stereotypical outfits, and the voices are early 2000s edgy Chinese voices done by white guys. This was very common at the time and was pretty normalized even in children's media. Whenever I see a piece of media like this, it often sticks out to me how the criticisms these things make of foreign countries can also be said of Western nations as well. Like, the main point being made here is that China has an obsession with valuing work as the only detail in one's life which defers worth, with the choice not to do work being actively vilified. Which, yeah, can't imagine what that's like. Years later, the same team made a sequel with original animation, wherein Chinese Spongebob realizes that after years and years of constantly working, he's still poor, despite being promised excess wealth if he worked hard enough and despite other people becoming rich off of his labor. Which, not only is that true in America, isn't that just the plot to Spongebob? But really none of that is supposed to be the point you take away from Spongebob in China. The short was created as a protest of Google's recent choice to allow the Chinese government to censor their version of the search engine. So the goal probably wasn't to be smart, but rather outwardly offensive. The serving is a loud taunt of how all Western nations have perceived free speech. And it's pretty terrible, but it's OG terrible. The first kind of terrible you experience when you start using the internet. And doesn't that give it at least a little bit of value? The answer is no. Speaking of Spongebob being used as a tool to criticize governments, did you know there was actually a Spongebob parody in 2003 that featured Tom Kenny in the role? You see, SNL used to have a recurring segment called TV Funhouse. Out of all the recurring segments, the most popular was probably the ambiguously gay duo. But another was called The Ex-Presidents, about a superhero group of former presidents who try to assist George W. Bush. In one episode, they tried to recruit Spongebob himself to help film a propaganda piece in support of the Iraq war before the sea creature attempts to quit out of lack of comfort. You want me to sponge up all of the urine in America and then squeeze myself over Saddam Hussein's mouth? You have him eating bald eagle heads. I mean, do they do that? Different cultures like different foods. SpongeBob tries to leave, so the ex-presidents kidnap him and try to blackmail him. Check his hard drive for child porn. Time is a flat pancake. But if there's any Spongebob parody on the early internet that any person from the time can probably remember, it's the iconic, the unforgettable Spongebong Hemp Pants. 
This is another example of a parody made for TV, but it's not an example of one aired on TV. Let me explain. In 2006, VH1 began airing a show titled VH1 Illustrated. It was an animated skit program which featured self-referential twists on popular events of the day. Lots of jokes about Michael Jackson, W, and Chaney, you know, for the most part things that we don't need to revisit in 2020. But during production, the centerpiece to the program was Spongebong Hemp Pants, a parody of Spongebob which presents the characters as drugs instead of aquatic life forms. When the skits were pitched to VH1, the station was surprisingly totally fine with them, stating that as long as the parodies did not condone drug culture, it was totally fine to present a skit like this. This is also YouTube's stance on what's okay on their site, so fingers crossed on this video staying monetized. However, at the last minute, VH1 became fearful of being sued by Nickelodeon and thus attempted to get approval to essentially have Nick license the segments as official Spongebob media. Nick obviously did not approve, and Spongebong never made it to TV. However, the skits mysteriously leaked online sometime later, creating a viral craze which sadly did not do much to promote the show. Spongebong Hemp Pants lives with his best friend Hashbrick in a bungalow dormitory where they play video games together, eat seaweed brownies, and smoke seaweed. They often visit their dealer, Spliffword, who looks like he should be the protagonist in a Twitter comic made by someone who hates black people, but rarely can actually afford the drugs they're trying to buy. Spongebong and Hashbrick will often spend their time either trying to find money to buy seaweed or running around high having misadventures. They often run into other characters along the way, such as Mr. Crack and Crystal, and yep, that's it, I just explained the whole thing. I remember finding this when I was in elementary school and just being mesmerized by it all. But the thing is, I was so young at the time that I don't think I really understood the joke. I remember after watching this, I googled what hemp was, and when you do that, Google tells you that hemp is something used to make rope and paper, so I said, oh, okay and I didn't look into it any further. I just basically presumed that there was this weird secret culture on the internet that was obsessed with rope making, and that all of this weird humor was just rope puns that I didn't understand. It wouldn't be until the fourth or fifth grade that I took part in my school's D.A.R.E. program. If you never took part in D.A.R.E., it's a school program that teaches kids who know nothing about drugs everything about drugs. Instead of inhibiting drug use, I'm confident it just made us all better at doing drugs. But the point is that I think this is the most mesmerizing aspect of Spongebong Hemp Pants. Yes, it has this clear adult humor, but it's presented in a weirdly subtle way. Subtle in the sense that it's not Spongebob saying curse words or having sex or something a child would easily recognize. So if you don't get the drug humor, it just feels like a real Spongebob episode, but with the color color palette swapped? Maybe there are kids out there who remember some of these scenes as real Spongebob moments because it really does go out of its way to get the style that close, not to mention the fact that Patrick's voice is pretty much spot on. The truth is we're all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing, except my thinking included nachos. Wow, that's heat, man. Let's go get some nachos. I'll admit I, I don't have a lot more to say about this one. It's certainly the thing I wanted to look at the most when I decided to do this video, but it mostly speaks for itself. I suggest looking it up when this video is over because it still is pretty interesting to watch. Wow, you really lost your mind! I lost my mind! You shaved your nipples! <laughs> We're a couple of screw-ups! Yeah! <laughs> I like to make videos like this in sets of threes, and I started wondering what could possibly finish something like this off. And I figured that since most of the stuff we've been talking about so far have been pastiches made by adults, then it would be fitting to wrap this up on something a little more adolescent. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the third half of the video. We've got a special guest here. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Salty. I'm I'm a guy. Yeah, exactly. This is a YouTuber friend of mine, and we're both being represented through our plushies, which are available to purchase nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't introduced this concept to you yet, but this video is about uh, SpongeBob parodies on like the early internet that you would usually come across by total accident. 
So far we've talked about Spongebob in China, and we've talked about, of course, Spongebong hemp pants. I don't know if you ever found either of those. I, uh, those were, quote unquote, by my classmates in middle school and elementary school, those were, quote unquote, uh, the funniest shit that they have ever seen. Like, you can't, you can't get any funnier than Spongebong hemp pants. Well, the third one today, I don't actually remember. I don't think I ever saw this one, but it was suggested by a friend, a uh, friend of the channel, Hippie Rat, who suggests any good idea I've had in the last two years. Sponge Bob plays Saw. Oh, that thumbnail is amazing. <laughs> All right, you ready to go? You ready for this adventure? Yes. Where am I? I can't see. Oh my God. Am I dead? Oh my God. You're not dead. Who's there? <laughs> Click. The, the brown slug. Where are we? Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <laughs> the text, goes, the text go. goes way too fast. Check Squidward's radio. I got it. Squidward's like dead. Put it on play. I want to play a game. You're going to die in seven days. What? What's the text? But if you want to live, just look around for keys to unlock your chains. Or you can also try to cut the chains with the saws in you pockets. Live or die, it's your choice. Shit! SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes by way too fast. <laughs> just like SpongeBob. Let's cut the chain. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That is> so <laughs> funny. The proportions. He don't want us to cut the chains. He want us to cut our feet. Idiot! <laughs> Fuck you! I'm gonna cut me own one! No, Patrick! No! See you later! <laughs> Escaping to the great outdoors. No! <gasps> Squidward was alive the whole time. The key of that chain? Is in your stomach inside? You must go to saw to. <laughs> you must <laughs> use the saw to get it out. I'm gonna go. What? The be <laughs> wait. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna go. The people is ungrateful to be alive, but not you, not anymore. <laughs> I like how Squidward, out of every character that's shown up so far, has. Like, the least amount of grammar. He just- uh, he's obviously lost a lot of blood. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that- that's it? Okay, so here's the thing. That's my catchphrase. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, so that was Saw Part 1. And, um... There's a sequel that's supposed to be set, like, right after that. That's sort of more of the adventure. Okay. And they're- but it's, you know, like, a completely different person. The first part was made by Blade Dead. And the second part was made by Panchicho Matrix. Interesting. Okay. So, do you want to be the one that looks like you and I'll be the red one? Uh, okay, wait a second. <laughs> Back the fuck <laughs> up. What do you mean the one that looks like me? They look exactly alike. <laughs> I like how well, you one of them said has that. Your hair. You, you said that and you assumed that I would know exactly who you're talking about. One of them has green hair. I don't have green hair. <laughs> Wait, what, 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 hair, what color is your character's hair? Brown. <laughs> you, Why own, did I think a, you own a plushie of my character, Quentin. <laughs> it's because your nose. I knew there's some green on it. <laughs> oh, my. oh, green hair, green nose, same exact thing. I'm sorry. Color really do be like that sometimes. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so which one do you want to be? I mean, you can choose, I, I guess. I could be the one that looks like me, I guess. I do want to say, the, these both look like MS Paint, like, ver stick figure versions of Phineas and Ferb. Where are we, Patrick? I don't know. I just woke up here. Me too. <laughs> me, me too. We should find a way out. I found this when I woke up. Put it on play. Right now, you're breathing a poisonous gas. The gas is gonna kill you in at least two hours. They're sea creatures. They live underwater. They're not- there's no gas. Hey, here- there's a key! It could be open to- to open this door! No- No, who, it could, who the fuck is this?! It could be a trap, though. 
<laughs> Please. <laughs> Are these the fantastic fucking four? <laughs> go, go, gadget, extend my arm. <laughs> He, he died. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, SpongeBob. I told you it was a trap. It opened the door. Let's go. Oh, loading screen? Great. Hey, Patrick. There's a tape for you. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's like Mark. Put it on play. Hello, Patrick. The door in front of you is programmed to be locked in two minutes. This two minutes start started running since you get into this room. Find a key to open this door before time's up. So you'd better hurry, there's an antidote inside. For, for the gas? No, that's kind of counterintuitive because if it is an antidote for the gas... And, and, <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Let me just put my hand down this, this <laughs> hole of syringes. <laughs> the key must be down there. Oh, Patrick, go for it. Are, are you insane? <laughs> I will go down there. Time's running out, Patrick. You, bring me the key. <laughs> 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 Patrick's an asshole, what the hell? <laughs> you too! <laughs> you too! <laughs> Patrick, why did you do it? I like your cut, G. Bang, boom, straight to the moon! <laughs> Fucking snails, the door's gone closed. Can we get out now? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's enter here. Why the loading screens? Hey, here's a box. Who is Nipponch? Why is this the original character that came, the name they came up with? <laughs> oh, that's me. It's everybody's favorite SpongeBob character, Nepakumo. What's my name? A tape. Press play button. Hello, Nip Nipuccino. There are two antidotes inside of the oven behind of you. One for you and the other for someone else. You know what to do. Let the game begin. I'm on my way. I got him! Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. Did he die? <laughs> yes! Why? Why? <laughs> this was definitely made by someone who, like, is at that age where, where your friends start ripping the heads off your Barney plushies and you pretend like it doesn't bother you. <laughs> someone says, I can't see anything. Turn on the lights. Click. Oh, it's the room for the first one! Oh no, the poison effect is killing me! Hey, he has a number on his back. So I'm gonna kill you. You still don't know your own number. Oh my god. Oh, and they're just no, playing along. No, Cli <laughs> no. Ew, gross. Are we just supposed to pretend like that was Patrick doing that? What? Whoa. <laughs> you saved my life. How am I supposed to pay you? Giving me your number. The end. I don't know what the hell just happened. Uh, some guy who's not even a SpongeBob character won the Saw games. What was the point of even making it SpongeBob Saw? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'm sure none of these are interesting, but like apparently people are obsessed with SpongeBob Saw. Like everyone thinks that they can do it right. So there's been like whole <laughs> reboots. And reinterpretations, but they're all still in MS Paint, and Are they use like the same like weird ass secondary <laughs> character. Like who the? Wh why the fuck would you include if you were to reboot SpongeBob Saw? And look, here's another one. Here's another one, right? Another <laughs> reboot of SpongeBob Saw still has the fucking. Who are these guys? Are you telling me that there's some serious drama in the SpongeBob Saw community over who <laughs> can make the best SpongeBob Saw, and they all use like the same characters? I mean, it's so easy to make fun of that, like, like someone trying to add horror and gore to Spongebob. But like, I don't know, I read a comic the other week called like the, the Bikini Bottom Horror. Oh, I know that comic. It like really fucked me up. Like I can't look at Mermaid Man and th without thinking about that. Oh yeah. Um, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is if, if, even if someone at least tries a little bit, you can do a concept like this well. <laughs> but it's just like, like, what the fuck is this?
Well, I guess in the end, the real SpongeBob play style part two were the friends we made along the way. Shut your damn mouth. I want to stop right now and give a big, big, big thanks to GlassesUSA.com who sponsored this video. GlassesUSA.com, uh, they're a great online glasses service you can use to buy glasses from the safety of your home without catching the plague or none of that nonsense. And we got our, fr our friend D uh, Dan over here, the Salty Boy, and he's trying on a couple pairs. What do, you, what do you think of that pair you're wearing right now, Salty Boy? It makes my eyeballs feel good. Okay, all right. Let's try on another one. Another one. Oh, you look great in that. Do a little Vogue pose. I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing my pose. I, I, I'm looking so fine with these glasses on. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's try another one. Oh, there is no glasses that look bad on you, man. I mean, you look fan. You look fantastic. Bitch, I know it. <laughs> Just give me some more like appreciating your glasses audio. I these glasses really make me appreciate my looking balls. I really like how these glasses feel on my face. Glasses, more like quality purchase. Ooh! You heard it here, folks. And if you want to get a special gift discount just in time for the holidays, check out the link in the top of the description. Once again, that's the link at the top of the description for the best glasses you will ever find. I promise you guys, it is worth it to check this out. Uh, hey, Salty, so we're recording this October 23rd. Yes. And... We're, uh, I'm probably not going to have this uploaded until, like, early December, so I think we should record an outro for every possible outcome to the election. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump has won the presidency of the United States. We're all going to die. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Biden has won the presidency of the United States. We're all going to die, but slowly. Ah! Oh, it's a start. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the election was slightly unclear, and the military and or the Supreme Court has led a political coup ag against, against uh, the American government. And we now have a leader that has been forced upon us, despite whatever the election results were. I love mining lithium for Elon Musk, our overlord. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, Vermin Supreme, the President of the United States, elected, uh, everyone voted third party this time. Ladies and gentlemen, a, a Labrador Retriever accidentally got included on the ballots and everybody thought it would be funny to vote for them so air Bud is now uh <laughs> the acting president of the united states for the next four years peace declared in the middle east everyone happy with this decision <laughs> okay let's keep trying to think of ones what's the what's the, how stupider can we get than air Bud as president i don't i don't know if i can get dumber than that god i can't believe you've done this to us you you, you we peaked so hard at dog i can't think of anything else Okay, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. Imagine the night of the election, uh, the, the results come in, and the person just like, all right, the results are in. The new president of the United States is, ladies and gentlemen, it's Saturday night! <laughs> <laughs> and then it just zooms out the entire Saturday night live cast is now president. All right, so... um. Welcome to the outro, ladies and gentlemen. There's going to be some buttons on your screen in a second. Uh. And remember, remember that our our goal for 400,000 subscribers is if we get to 400,000 subscribers before the year is out, I'm going to do an iCarly video. So, uh, you know a lot about iCarly, right, Dan? Yes. You know, you know, yeah. I speed run uh, iCarly for Wii. It's literally what I do. <laughs> it's like my main thing right now. So go check out his channel to see more of that. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's all I post. <laughs> and at the, rate, at the rate that Dan grows, he'll get there before we do, but <laughs> thanks for watching this year's Knock Off November. Um, Salty, do you know my catchphrase? Uh, actually, I do. Can I say it? Yeah, sure, say it. Hey, guys, my name is Quentin Reviews. <laughs> that, that's it, right? <laughs> There's something wrong with my wrist, man. I keep popping it, like, all day, every day. Is there a wrist doctor? Is that a thing? Uh, that is a thing. Oh, wow, I gotta see one of those, because my wrist is fucked up, apparently. I believe, I believe you can probably ask your normal physical doctor about it. Yeah, I should get one of those, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Just bring it up to my dentist. <laughs> so, do you know anything about wrists?